Hi, I'm Dr. John McCallick. I'm an assistant professor of accountancy at University College Dublin. I published a book on introductory financial accounting using IFRS that you can download at the link below. This playlist of videos explains all the important concepts and techniques that are in the book and that you will need to prepare basic financial statements. I've included a, a link to the uh, playlist of videos uh, below as well. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this content helpful. We've seen in the last video how journal entries help us to record transactions. What we now have to think about is how we're going to accumulate these transactions for a particular account. So it's one thing saying we're interested in um, the transaction where we bought a car, but it's another thing asking, well, what is the balance on the car asset? How many cars have we got? How much money has gone into or been debited to that car asset account? And this is where T accounts come into play. T accounts help us to keep track of transactions. Uh, they are a system to accumulate all the debits and credits in a particular account. Nowadays, all um, sizable enterprises keep their uh, accounts on computers. So maybe the T account doesn't actually uh, function exactly as we are going to see it in, in this module, but all the same concepts apply when you're recording transactions in a computer system as in a, um, a, a manual system. Um, so uh, what, what is a T-account and how does it work? Well, the first thing is a T-account is for a particular account. So here the T-account is for the bank account and we write that in the middle of the T. So we draw a T on the page uh, with the line down the middle of the page and then we write the, the name of the account up here. So each account in our balance sheet, statement of financial position and income statement will have its own T account. On the left hand side of the T account we will put all the debits that have um, happened against that account or been posted to that account. And on the right hand side, we will put all the credits. And when we make an entry, we will put the date, the corresponding account. So this is the account that the entry came from. So if it was uh, in our car example, it was um, debit, car, credit, bank. So um, over here, we would um, have car as the corresponding account for that uh, transaction. And the amount of the transaction. Okay, so that's the basis of T accounts. The reason they're called T accounts is that they look like a T. Okay, in many computer systems, You've exactly the same thing as this, except it doesn't look like a T. What you have is, you know, you have all the details over here and then you have debit, credit, and that's the kind of printout you get uh, for a uh, T account. But you know, it's exactly the same concept. Using T accounts to record transactions. Well, let's see, let's go back to our car example. Remember that the car asset uh, was debited with 20,000 and the bank asset was credited with 20,000. So the way we do this entry is we put bank over here 20,000 and car over here 20,000. Uh, and you can see, you know, we use the corresponding T accounts. That is uh, the car T account. And then up in the car T account, we use the bank uh, T account. What does this actually mean? Well, it means when we look at a T account, we can see where all of the postings came from or went to. 
So uh, we can just glance at a t-account and get a sense of uh, how, um, uh, you know, what has gone in and out of that account. So t-accounts, each t-account contains all the transactions that affect a particular account during the accounting period. So um, this is organizing by account. Journal entries were organized by transaction which is a different thing. And the name of the corresponding account is written beside the amount in the T account. Thank you. You also need to know how to balance a T account. This is a very simple procedure. It is slightly um, more complex in the manual system. The computer just adds up all the debits and credits and tells you what is the um, balancing amount. But in the manual system, there's a particular way of doing this. It's hundreds of years old. Uh, so what do we do when we want to balance a T account? And, and by balancing, we just mean adding up both sides and seeing which is the bigger side. Uh, so um, what we do is we look at both sides, we add them up. So uh, there are these entries here on the T account, they add to 2,500. And over here on, the mich on, on, this account, on this side, we only have 500. Now we take the smaller side and we write in at the bottom of the T account balance, and we write the difference between the two sides. So we have 2,500 here, 500 here, uh, so the balance is going to be 2,000. And then we transfer the balance down here to the other side. Uh, so it gets transferred from the credit to the debit. And this essentially is our opening balance for the next period. So this is the balance we can start with. So let's think about this. How does this work? Well, we've, we've 2,500 of debits in this account we have 500 of credits, which means the net balance on the account is 2,000 debit, because there's more debits than credits. So the net balance is 2,000 debit, and that's what we want to end up with for, you know, starting off for the next period. Um, uh, and that's what this technique gets us. We write in the balance at the small side and transfer it over to the other side um, and that then gives us a balance of 2,000 debit. So that is the technique to balance a T account. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this content helpful. Bye.